Good morning guys, today I'm going to be talking 2020 design trends. Something that's pretty common at the beginning of each new year is a trends report and I've done it before and I'll link down below to my previous year's trend videos. This year I'm going to do something a little different because I think too much is made of trends and I honestly don't believe that following trends is a really good idea. I think that it's better to actually approach the work you do as a designer and kind of find your own voice and do stuff for your users and for your business rather than saying what's hot right now, what's cool this year, what's in and what's not out. This is not fashion. This is about having style and each brand should have their own unique way in which they communicate and talk. What I do want to do though is share with you a couple of great design trends that are relative more to product designers and people who make things for the internet. I'm gonna point you in the right direction to, to watch these videos. I'll show you short clips, but you can watch the full videos. Links are down below. Go watch those in their entirety, but I wanna discuss a few of the trends. The first video that I wanna share with you is from Jonathan, who is the CEO of AJ and Smart, which is a consultancy, I think, um, I think in Germany and he gives his three predictions. All right, let's dive straight into number one. And the first trend in 2020 that you're gonna see a lot more of than you expect is VR. I personally don't think, especially in South Africa, but generally I don't think VR is like anywhere close to being useful yet. VR in my lifetime, I mean, for over 20 years, um, VR has been talked about and I haven't even seen the, the needle really move all that much. And while, yeah, I've seen some progress, I don't see it becoming mainstream yet. So I'm not a big fan of VR. I wouldn't personally put a lot of effort in it. I would rather put my effort in his second topic. My second prediction for 2020 is we're actually going to see a re-emergence of AR. Which is um, AR which is augmented reality. Augmented reality can be a reality because all you really need to do is to point your device and you would now have this interaction in your real world. And that for me is a practical thing. And if you see some of the stuff that uh, Microsoft has, has done previously, and it seems like they've kind of walked away from that, but there's all this really cool tech that's out there in AR and I do think it's a big thing and I do think that designers need to start figuring out how to design for these environments. How are you going to create extra interaction that gives whatever's happening on the screen more depth. The third thing that he talks about is AI tools and machine learning are going to be so good that a lot of these sort of blue sky ideas that designers and product people had over the last few years are now a reality. Artificial intelligence, I agree with him, is the standard now. If you're a big business, you're more than likely going to be using some sort of machine learning. I would definitely recommend watch his video. He gives some good examples of this. You're seeing it everywhere. It is the standard for a website. There are also some platforms that are out there for the kind of smaller guys who don't have the dev teams to be able to do um, any sort of machine learning. But I think those are three massive trends you've got to look out for in 2020 and beyond. 
The next person that I really feel kind of grasps things is Ren from uh, Flux. He he's based in Israel. I mean, he's got a very practical view this year and he's kind of going, hey, forget about all the fads, forget about everything. The only thing that you should be thinking about is optimizing your website so that people can use it and get value out of it and businesses get a return on their investment. So here are some of the points that he discusses. First trend that you need to understand is GDPR. So actually, what is GDPR and why is it a trend? GDPR is actually a law that passed in Europe, in the European Union, actually in mid-2018. And America seems to be complying and he talks about that. This was big when I went to London in 20, beginning of 2018. Uh, there was a lot of chatter about this. This is not new, but it's definitely got to be complied. And there's a great website and example of what it means um, to, to follow these practices. They're a good practice period, not just for the European market topic is accessibility. So I made a video recently about accessibility and this year in 2019, um, this is basically what happened. So Domino's were sued. Okay, so the next thing that he talks about is accessibility. And I've had some first-hand experience having an employee who, you know, had a disability and he struggled to get through you know, doorways at, at the workplace. And he had a really passionate view on this. And I'm definitely going to make a video with my friend Leonard in the future um, to really discuss this topic because I think it's really, really important accessibility. You know, Rand talks about how Domino's were sued by a blind person because the site wasn't accessible and things like that. Trend number three, and this is, uh, I started talking about this right now, conversions over beauty. Well, I'm talking about conversions. Do they reach their business goals using this website? And you have to understand this. Okay. You... The next thing that he talks about is conversions. And conversions are when people go to your website and you convert them into a paying customer um, of your product and there's got to be a return on the investment for the business and so you know this is a very very valid point that he's making that you really need to focus on doing what's right for the business not necessarily what's right for the design community not necessarily what's right for stakeholders in the in the business who have quite like you know the latest i've got to have an app i've got to have vr because it's all the rage and i saw it in a trend report He's, this is a very like smart thing to do is build a website that converts use your data to track this and enhance and make choices that test well and users want at the end of the day. Trend number four, funnels. And this is another elaboration into the, the discussion about how do web how do website converts. The next thing you talk about is a really big thing because I really believe in ecosystems. The kind of whole service and product ecosystem in its entirety that a customer will experience and engage with not just in a one-time transaction, but their entire um, relationship with the brand. And during that, you know, when you go customer loyalty, you're talking about like a long-term thing. You're not talking about, oh, uh, I had one good experience. You gotta have endless experience. A good company who does this is Apple. Um, and so the, the point here is that you've got to go into the entire process. You've got to be able to make sure that the website is doing its function during that funnel um, of the, the sales process. Because everybody seems to think that, oh, you land on a web page and you buy something. But no, you might have seen a billboard, which then made you go and do some research uh, on Instagram, and then Instagram pushed you to the page. And that page needs to work, whether it be lead generation or whether it be purchase, it doesn't matter what it is, it needs to work. And then what is that follow up process? And then how do you loop and keep things really um, 
kind of functioning better for your business and make sure that like if people have problems if they need to get in touch with support if anything it's all considered and all part of that process trend number five is chats you've probably seen this everywhere most interesting i mean i think the most popular one is intercom where you see it all around the web you know these these chats that are at the bottom right corner the next thing you talk about is chats and i don't know like i'd actually had somebody tell me last year already that you know, kind of chats going out and the whole thing. There's definitely got to be like a real dedicated team on chat. It's a big, big, big task unto itself. There's an entire language that needs to be established. There's an entire um, ecosystem that needs to be built around support, information, um, urgency, uh, you know, not letting the bots go wild and and things like that. So I would strongly encourage people to still consider chat. I think it's an excellent means of communication. I hate when I go on a website and I can't find a contact thing and then it feels redundant to email support in the world where we should be switched on 24-7, 365 and in this year, 366. Okay, you could take the 29th of February off if you must. I agree with kind of where these guys are going. They are not caught up on um, the fads. The you know, there's currently a lot of this kind of soft finish in in web design. It's great in your graphics program. It would not translate into your design. By the time that you could convince an engineer to actually go and code all the user interface in the soft finish. Uh, it would probably not be trendy anymore. You'd probably be looking at 2021s or 2022s uh, design trends. So it's, I don't think it's a smart move at scale. Of course, on a small microsite level, I can follow that if you must. Another big one that's come out is there's these new fonts and I think Will Patterson covers it and I'll put a link below that do all these crazy things and you know, I. I think it's wonderful like how they're extending font packs but I don't think it's practical it's not going to work for web fonts it's going to be really bloated and I think that on a small scale sure some designer could build their website like that but if you're looking at a large scale um, project you just couldn't do it you'd eat up all your bandwidth trying to download this font all day um, Generally speaking, I would focus more on the user. I think that everything needs to serve the person on the other end of the glass in their world, in that moment, in that relevant moment. And I think you've got to get into that headspace. Okay, so Stefan um, Kuntz is a, like a creative letterer and he does these great tutorials. And he recently released like a, a, a 2020 design trends kind of hand lettering thing and, and it's like a little slider and whoops and you know what he says is look, he's not a trend guy that's not what he knows and what he what he doesn't actually do he would just he's terrible at guessing and I and I've got to agree with that because a lot of the stuff you know is what everybody's just saying and I feel like that's just trying to be popular you know what he he said is like Following trends is like riding a roller coaster. It's kind of up and down and uh, there's hype and then there's after hype and yeah, it's, it's kind of silly. Uh, but then he kind of says, you know, like he, he brings a few points, but he says ultimately it's your unique voice. He says that it comes out naturally when you stop copying others. So yeah, guys, I think like you've got to probably learn and explore and push the limits for yourself. I wouldn't follow like all these trends. Um, I'm sure that like people are going to be going like, that's not what we expected. We want to do like know all these things. I put a bunch of links down below and uh, you can follow those if you want to know whether you should do monochromatic photographs or minimal this or everything else but at the end of the day I believe if you make products if you make something 
that isn't about a subjective art piece you should be thinking about the end user on the other end of the glass and how it serves them best so one of the questions that came in that I got was do we still need product owners in design squads so I feel that this question is probably coming from a place of frustration because most product owners in my experience are these people that are sitting in a room doing very little and in big corporates product owners are kind of somebody who is usually kind of put into that position to fill the role which is not necessarily making them qualified to add the value that a product owner should actually add to uh, any sort of squad. A product owner is an essential part of the tri triad? The triad that, that a team should be made up of. There should always be a product owner, a design director, and a tech director. The three of them should work together to put out a product in a squad. I've seen this successfully done and I've worked on an amazing product owner or two before. The product owner ultimately becomes the person between the squad and the business and is responsible for making sure that all the business requirements are facilitated and at the same time keeping the project on track and moving in the right direction. Sure, there's lots of other people who add value to the team, but the product owner is that key stakeholder that needs to focus on making sure that everybody in the team has what they need. Then it's up to the responsibility of the design director and or design lead and the uh, tech lead to make sure that the product is rightfully designed properly and developed correctly and between in that trio you can make a great product do i think that you could lose a product owner honestly i wouldn't recommend it unless the kind of business side of things is taken care of already to believe that the executives that storm in the room and make decisions are therefore a product owner wouldn't be right and in the other circumstance to assume their responsibility as either the design or the tech can cause a little bit of problems and a little bit of imbalance and a little bit of bias so I do think that this independent stakeholder is an important part of any squad. My name is Craig Jamison. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, leave a comment, and stay cool.